Hi, Kui. Nakna Malita, and this is my channel, The Midnight Librarian. Today I will be talking about my review of When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. So this is a little different for me comparably to what I've done in the past with reviews, which was to review books by Indigenous authors. I feel like Indigenous reviewers can get kind of trapped with that because that seems to be all people are looking for us to, listening to us for, and really like we are more than just being Indigenous. We'd like to put our voices in, in many other places. I am not only indigenous, but I am an artist. I enjoy listening to true crime. So with that, I wanted to do more reviews. So I'm going to try that here. As far as I know, Paula McLean is not indigenous from what I could see. If I'm wrong, please let me know. Otherwise, When the Stars Go Dark is a mystery thriller crime novel by Paula McLean that's scheduled to be published April 13th of 2021 by Balanstein Books. Thank you so much to Balanstein for the eARC approval through Nat Galley. So because of that, I will be posting having this picture here because I don't have a physical copy. Oh my god, my chair is so creaky. When the Stars Go Dark particularly interested me was its location. Um, it's set in Mendocino County as well as Petaluma. Why that interests me is because Mendocino County is actually the county just south of where I currently live, so it's a couple hours away, and it, that really intrigued me. Because I'm somewhat familiar with the place, um, I actually have never lived there. Um, I do pass through it when going through San, when going to San Francisco, and honestly it doesn't have the best reputation up here. <laughs> Anything between Southern Humble and uh, Ukiah, I feel like, has kind of a bad reputation from what I understand. If you've heard differently, let me know. <laughs> Fort Bragg itself in Mendocino tends to be a vacation spot in the summer. Otherwise, um, yeah, that's all I've really heard about it. There's only, that's something that I grew up with. We only stopped at like Willits and Ukiah if we ever drove through there. Um, I remember my family getting mad at me for stopping in Cloverdale a couple times uh, for safety concerns. <laughs> um, and it wasn't until this book that I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> so we'll get into that. But it's also just, um, and just so that you are aware, Mendocino County for the most part was Pomo land as well as a couple other, but I say that because it was mentioned in this book, which I'll talk about later. When the Stars Go Dark it follows Anna Hart, who is a seasoned uh, missing persons detective specializing in children abduction cases or missing children cases and in San Francisco. So something ends up happening in San Francisco and may has Anna Hart um, leaving San Francisco behind to go visit Mendocino County where she grew up for the most part um, specifically in Mendocino. When she gets into Mendocino she finds that there is a missing child case that's happening in the small town and she kind of gets she gets roped into it after having a discussion with the sheriff who sh was a longtime friend that she grew up with as well and this particular missing persons case is having Anna face some of the traumas of her own past as well as events that have happened in Mendocino during her childhood. So with that in mind as well as the true crime or with the crime aspect, there are some content warnings for missing children, death of a child, murder of a minor, graphic depictions of death, injury, and decomposition, a sexual assault of a minor, PTSD, foster care system, and we are following a detective, so we are um, getting the perspective of cops, so just be aware of that going in. Anna, as a character, was easy enough to follow. It was a little hard to get into at first at the beginning of the book because Anna is flustered with what happened in San Francisco and we kind of get her narration of being flustered and so it took a couple tries to read through a couple passages to be able to better understand what was going on then but once we get into Mendocino and start and she starts getting into the missing children's report or missing persons case um, we really see that Anna Hart as a professional is really invested emotionally invested into finding all of any case that crosses her path which 
leaves me thinking that she is not only passionate but and and like I have my heart goes out to her and able to do that but at the same time there's this intensity to it that makes me wonder if it's too much if she's too involved um and you kind of get the sense that she's a workaholic and that she gets overly invested at times to the part where it's like you kind of understand what start to understand what happened in San Francisco and why she had to escape. The environment of the book itself was really fun for me just because Mendocino does have a similar environment to Humboldt County and that it has a redwood forest. It has a lot of land reserve in terms of protected land or protected wilderness um, and ferns and weather. So, so for Paula McLean to kind of get into that I thought was really fun in terms of I recognize it and it was fairly um, familiar to me in that in the similarities to here so that was fun and I felt like it was local or it was uh, yeah just something that I grew up with so it's like she talked about how Anna ran through off the beaten path um, through some a dense thicket of uh, ferns and how it was misting and it's like oh you're gonna get soaked and of course she was like completely drenched by the end of it and it's like yeah <laughs> so <laughs> just that familiarity of it was really fun we also get this portion of Anna that um, she was in the foster care system and so was Paula McLean so that was a new dynamic that I feel like we don't see a whole lot of in books I thought that had a complexity to Anna's character that was really vivid and like full of trauma in and of itself. But because of that, because Anna was so complex, I felt like some of the other characters weren't as fleshed out. There were some characters that were had um, not quite as a complex story as Anna, but was still enough to keep me interested. However, there were a couple other characters just outside that, um, the main, so I think it was mostly Anna and her partner Will or the the sheriff she partners up with Will um and maybe a character here and there that was actually like complex and interesting however anything outside that the characters just fell flat to me um there was one character in particular that I questioned why they were there and honestly wanted more of them in there because they felt just like it just felt there to be as a token they were mentioned briefly and once and then maybe another time but basically this character was disabled and a native american and they had nothing to do with anything and like they happened to be married to a psychic that was trying to help the the case which and it was but like that seemed to be the only diversity that i could tell um, everyone else, that's one thing that I questioned was that Anna was just like, he's Native American. It's like, okay, how were you able to tell that? Because of how he looks? Did he tell you he was Native American? Like, <laughs> it just made me question. It, and it was like, he didn't have much, he didn't have much to do with anything. Um, so that was a bit disappointing as well as that was briefly mentioned that, um, there was a couple occasions where Anna mentions that um, her foster mother was trained by a medicine woman, a Pomo medicine woman. There was another time where she finds a, um, a particular setup in the woods that looks like um, what the Pomo used to do in terms of housing. And then there was like, oh, the Pomo used to do this to send messages to each other. And it was just this as as much like it's one of those things where I like the fact that you're recognizing that that was Pomo land. However, the way you're talking about indigenous people is in past tense. And it's like, why couldn't that Native American man have introduced himself as a Pomo descendant or something and had a bit more to do with helping Anna heal or whatever, because it was particularly frustrating. Um, because as she talks about Pomos in past tense, as if they're not here anymore, Anna also happens to be 
having vivid dreams of Pomo ceremony and able to help her solve the case or help her healing process. And um, it just kind of, I think, further portrayed Native American mysticism. So that I had an issue with, of just like, okay, we're not, indigenous people aren't good enough to actually like be a part of your plot, but we're like good enough to try to help heal your main character in like a spiritual way. I don't know. It was just something that I was, it was kind of icky for me, but I'm also not Pomo, so please bear that in mind. Um, indigenous people are not monolithic. We all have our own experiences, cultural practices and stories. So, um, yeah. So I don't know. I just wish that there, it was presented in a way that honored the fact that they were on Pomo territory without making it seem like that the Pomo were no longer there. So that bugged me. One thing too that bugged me, I don't know why, but it did, was that um, Paula McQueen had Anna constantly worried about grizzlies getting her in the woods. California grizzlies have been extinct for since 1924. A supposed sighting was 1924. So the fact that this so this book was set in 1993 um and able to in order to make it so that this this case was a little more difficult it, this case like the internet was just becoming this huge thing but there was no cell phones yet i'm sure there would be other bears um but grizzlies aren't in california anymore like there's an author's note at the very end that i actually really appreciated um, to an extent. Wishful thinkings of hoping that, you know, authors would recognize the land that the, the particular um, settings were on, um, but Paula McLean had said that she spent her some of her 20s in Mendocino County and that's where she knew that this book was going to be set and that it was going to be set in 1993 before cell phones and other um, current technological conveniences would help a case like this but realizing that the internet could be useful in this sort of case it was um paula mclean and in, in, like put in real events into this story so during as anna hart is in mendocino to find to work on this missing persons case there is another missing persons case that happens at the same time in petaluma which is like an a couple hours south of Mendocino. With that case, I thought it was an interesting dynamic in terms of that case was getting more publicity because they knew the um, girl in question was abducted. While the missing persons case that they were working on in Mendocino, they didn't have anything to go on off of that. She was just missing. And there was even evidence that she might have just left on her own accord, despite their suspicions that she might have been lured out. So it was that interesting dynamic of um, the like the publicity differences and how that works in terms of help having people help and having people donate and getting um getting more help from like the FBI because this case in Petaluma ended up getting like the FBI involved and um a lot of community involvement and it was a high profile case to the point where she even uh, sir uh Paula McLean had said that uh Winona Ryder was donating at her time and coming up to help the, the search because she grew up in Petaluma for a bit and actually shared the same drama teacher as the missing girl and I was like that's really detailed and that's really I think ballsy to put in that information and it turns out this was a true case this was the case of Polly Class uh, in Petaluma in 1993. So I think overall I'm rating this book 3.5 out of 5 stars um like I said, the, uh, it felt like a lack of diversity. Um, that one character just felt like this is our, the, like the diversity token really, as well as the um, past tense wording of Pomo, of the Pomo being in Mendocino area was frustrating. There was like other historical things for Mendocino, but it was the colonized settler um, history. So, 
like, which is interesting, but it was just like, the Pomo are still there. All right, and that is my review of When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. This book is out, I don't know if I said April 13th, 2021. Um, if you're, if you've read it or, um, or if this has piqued your interest in reading it, let me know your thoughts down in the description or down in the comments down below. Um, please no spoilers. I will also leave my links to my social medias if, or social media accounts if you want to follow me on any other platform. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, be sure to hit subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you get notified when I post more content. And I'll also have some raise awareness links down in the description down below, particularly murdered missing indigenous women girls and two-spirit um people i feel like that is fairly important and related to this <laughs> so different organizations um link down in the description down below for information donation do your research and donate and share where you can and i will see you in my next video i hope that you are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading Chew.